All right, cool. Um, can we? Can everybody see the the um the presentation? Just get a confirmation in chat here. Make sure that we're not going to just talk you talk to you guys for <laughs> an hour. Can you guys see the presentation? Yeah. Uh, Eddie, we, there's a little. We're getting, a, like we're getting a visual confirmation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah, we're good. Okay, we're good cool. to go. Okay. Cool. So, hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first pre hacks talk. Uh, this is the first time doing this kind of event. Uh, my name is Jose. And I'm Colton. Uh, and so, for this workshop, uh, we'll be going over some introductory uh, web development uh, languages that you could use this weekend. So, what uh, what uh, specifically are we going to go over this presentation? Uh, we'll be going over some basic HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, and React.js. Um, these are kind of the building blocks of web development. And so everything that you'll see on the internet, working with other frameworks that are more advanced, uh, we'll build off of um, these, uh, at least these first, the first three um, languages. So first up, we'll start with some HTML. So what is it? We'll, in the next few slides, we'll go over what is HTML, uh, basic elements that you'll see uh, if you haven't seen them yet. Uh, image and link tags, link tags, which uh, will be useful for when you're making your hacks, as well as div tags, which are also pretty crucial when creating a web page. So, what is HTML? HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and what it's mainly used for is to essentially build um, web pages from scratch, uh, essentially starting with a blank white canvas and then uh, adding in different elements to see, uh, to kind of format them on the screen. Uh, so like I said, they're pretty much building blocks for the structure of the web page. And so something to keep in mind here is it, HTML is focused on the structure, kind of what and what uh, is on the page rather than the styling of it. So not necessarily focused on the color or the formatting. Um, HTML uses elements to kind of change how your 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 content is displayed and also labels the content to be um, differentiated just so you don't have a wall of text in front of you um, kind of how you see different text larger or smaller uh, different text in different groups or in um, in different fonts so as for an html element uh, this is kind of the basic uh, tag that you'll see uh, all of them kind of format in. Uh, this carries into some other frameworks, actually. Uh, you'll see later in Colton's React uh, JS section that you'll see something similar to this. And so what is what we see here is the basic anatomy of an HTML element. Uh, first, we have the start and the end tags. And so this is kind of your um, your element that you use for, uh, for creating the web page. Here we have an example of a div tag. Uh, as you can see from the start and the end tag. And something to note is that the end tag has a slash in it to kind of signify its ending. Um, if that's not there, that one character will mess up your entire web page. And I have spent 30 minutes uh, looking for that uh, in the past. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's annoying. Um, inside of the start tag, you'll also have different attributes that you can use to uh, kind of label this div tag because you can have um, plenty of div tags, but each one might have a different purpose. Uh, this one has a class and you can call it an index. Um, the value can be whatever you want it to be. It's kind of like a variable. Uh, as for the name of the attribute, there are a set list of them. And depending on if you're working with just basic HTML or if you're adding frameworks and libraries, there may be a list of more attributes that you could use. Um, and those will be in a lot of documentation that you'll see online. And then finally, inside of the tags that you see inside of the um, the greater than and less than signs is essentially where your content goes, where your where the actual meat and potatoes is, the text of your web page, whether it's an introduction, a description, um, other elements can also go inside of these, inside of the content here. So first, the first uh, tag we'll go into is header tags. But before we go into there, I have some, in, I have some um, kind of starter code uh, that I created in HTML um, here. And so this doc type HTML, the HTML tags that you see here, and the head and the body are more so just formats for um, when you create a file. Uh, and this is in raw HTML. Nothing extra if you've seen those, there are CS, CS HTML or any um, JavaScript related uh, like 
HTML looking uh, code. Uh, this is just bare bones HTML. And so here we see something in the in the between the HTML tags. You you have a head, and in the head goes a lot of the kind of the background stuff. Uh, for example, here you can see I set the title of the tab to be uh, something other than um, normally it's like localhost 3000 or wherever you're hosting the um, the page. And so this is, where, for example, where you could set that to be your project name. Uh, and inside of the body is where we find uh, most of the content, actually all of the content that goes in the part that the user will interact with. And so the first uh, main tag that you usually learn is our header, header tags. Uh, there are six header tags going from one to six. And to use them, you just go h1 all the way down to h6. And they vary in size, as you can see here. Uh, these you can you can nest these together. You can put or you can put header tags in other um, in other uh, div tags and whatnot. And like we see here, you can nest uh, header tags inside of the body. And uh, Jack and Colton and Eddie, if you guys see questions, feel free to stop me. I don't have the chat open, so. So some other basic elements uh, to kind of introduce to you are so first thing first we have uh, lists since you know there are plenty of lists to organize our thoughts and our um, our websites for example if you were to make a menu or a shopping cart or want to make a ranking of something uh, lists are helpful and so there are two types of lists that HTML allows you to make uh, they are unordered lists so bullet points as you see here in the top and there or are ordered lists. Um, this is one of those examples where, or this is one of those elements where it's kind of a two elements in one. Uh, we have these ULs, which stand for unordered list, and then we have LIs, which stand for list item. And so each LI it has gets its own bullet point. Um, you can, as we'll see later, you can uh, you can style these, and you can instead of a bullet point, you can use something else and other uh, frameworks and libraries. And you know, there's complex code out there to also um, do something simple in a different library to um, you know, if you want to use instead of one, two, three, you can use Roman numerals, uh, for example. Uh, next are kind of the bread and butter of HTML tags are p tags or paragraph tags, and so this is where a lot of the text will go. Um, other libraries and frameworks will build on top of these p tags, but uh, in essence, you know, they it, they hold text. Uh, they allow you to also um, th there are HTML tags, uh, strong em for emphasis or super and sub for subscript, um, allow you to uh, change up how the text looks. Uh, normally, you'll have this in um, normally you'll have this in CSS, but it's also uh, possible to add this kind of uh, kind of uh, styling in the HTML. Uh, you might see it sometimes looking on a web page, uh, and if you go into F, if you go into inspect that web page, you'll you might see that uh, the strong tags or emphasize tags. Um, as for spaces, uh, just be wary that um, this is kind of white space ignorant. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really ig ignores white space. Uh, so you see here this you know beware of and spaces are not on the same line, but you know everything looks like it's normal. Um, if you were to put spaces in between the letters, however, uh, that would show up since there are characters in between. Uh, next, we're going to go over some image and link tags. So for example, uh, here I have an image tag. And image tags are unique in that they don't have a closing tag. They are just kind of their own. And where we, and if we go back to the anatomy uh, that you saw earlier, there are um, attributes here. So we, can, we have a source, we have, uh, which is the location of the image, uh, a width and a height that we can define. Um, you can do this here, or you can also do this in the CSS files that we'll see later. But for image tags, they they don't have a closing tag, and they're just their own thing. You can again um, nest these inside inside of div tags that we'll talk about later on, or um, in other uh, kind of grouping tags. And then lastly, for kind of the basic tags that, or elements that we have is your link tag, which is just uh, which is just um, signified with an A here. Uh, link tags have an href class that allow you to specify the link that you go to. You can also specify uh, if I click on this link, will it just you know redirect me to the same page, or will it open a brand new tab for me? Um, and you can um, have it open, have it do uh, different things like that. Uh, so this uh, these uh, different um, classes allow you to uh, acts allow you to um, do different things depending on what you want. You can add JavaScript in here, as we'll see later on, to um, do something when you click on the click on this link. Or uh, you can also have these links do 
uh, run a function that we'll see later on. Uh, you can also, as you see here, we have the A tags embed or nested inside of the paragraph tags, the B tags. Uh, those make it so that you know everything looks in uh, looks like it's normal text. And the part that has the link is the word website here. So kind of like how you see it in emails that you send, you can embed a link. Uh, this is kind of how that's done here in HTML. So uh, I've mentioned a lot about, I've been talking a lot about div tags and div tags, uh, as you can see here, nothing looks, it doesn't look very fancy uh, in terms of you know anything going on. Um, you can draw an imaginary line here. And so yeah, there's two groups here, but nothing's really changed. Uh, one big thing with div tags is they'll be used later on in CSS, but also they, they're also used to kind of organize your code to make it look um, a little easier to read. So for example, here you can see I have a, first div and a second div, and they have their own uh, headers and p tags. Um, and if you notice, I defined, a I defined a class for each of them. And so we'll see uh, for those classes, um, we'll see for those classes, you know, what we can do with that later on when we get into CSS. So with CSS now, we'll get into that. Um, CSS, the next, you know, couple of slides, we'll go into something, some similar things that we did with HTML. Uh, what is CSS? Um, how do we include using CSS in our uh, HTML code? And some examples that I took from, or some examples that uh, I do to kind of change how the examples that I showed for HTML uh, can change with CSS. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. Uh, and what this is for is the other half of kind of how you want to display to the web page the styling of it or kind of the look. Uh, it determines essentially how HTML appears on the screen, you know, how your paragraph tags look, how your links look, um, how your buttons, how your images look. Uh, these use selectors, uh, and we'll go over what a selector is later on, to determine which HTML element to modify, because maybe you only want to change certain div tags or certain bodies of text to look a certain way or have a different colored background. Um, the styling, the, the code that goes into CSS uh, files go into separate files that you will import, kind of, import with quotation marks uh, into the HTML file. And so I'll, we'll look at how to do that here in a second. So including H, uh, CSS and HTML, uh, here in the bottom, you can see the two files that I have in my uh, folder. And like I said earlier, in the head tag is kind of where we have a lot of the background stuff. And here is some basic code that you would use, again, with the href tag and the file that we want to use. And with this, any code that I put in this prehex demo.css file um, applies to uh, all of the um, all of the elements that show up in this prehex demo.html. If I had a different HTML file, I would have to include that as well uh, include that this line in that new html file in order for my css to take um, to work in that html file so before we go into what css uh you know uh examples for css uh we go we can go over the um the anatomy like we did with html and so the selector here in the beginning is kind of how we um call the elements how we you know determine which elements we want to mess with and so here we can see that this line of code is, or this uh, chunk of code is messing with the p tags, the paragraph tags. Um, again, it uses curly braces, uh, similar to functions in other uh, languages that you may see. And then inside of these braces is all of the um, values and properties that we want to change. So for example, this is changing the color of the text of all of the text, uh, all of the text that is in p tags, so paragraph tags, um, to be read. Um, Depend, for example, for me, I use uh, Visual Studio Code almost a lot of the time. And when I do color colon, uh, it, it gives me options here to um, to fill in. So it'll give you red. It'll give you um, colors that you've never even thought of, like aquamarine or uh, no, other more complex colors. You can also use the hex, the hex code of the color if you want to be that specific, or the RGB code as well um, so that you know, you're not uh, constrained to, you know, colors that do have names. So for example, here, um, 
we take that p tag and instead of red, uh, I change it to purple because purple is my favorite color. And we can also uh, change where the text is formatted to. So for example, here, we align it to be in the center. And as for these um, properties, uh, there are a whole list of them. Uh, if you ever need to look up, you know, how do I center text or how do I center a div or, you know, anything like that, you'll see um, documentation from Mozilla. You'll see Stack Overflow pages that suggest, you know, a, a number of different ways on how you want to, um, on the properties that you can use and kind of the workarounds around it. And so here you can see the text that we had earlier is now purple and is also in the center offset to the header tags and the lists that we had in the examples earlier. And so you can do, you can have as many, um, as many properties as you want. You can, um, you can use, you can um, make it so that you don't change the, the, um, special characters, so like the ones that are bold or italicized, you can just work with the regular p tags. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of different selectors that you can use to um, to pick and choose which ones to mess with. As for the as for styling the actual HTML, um, in terms of the divs before, if you remember, uh, we I had those classes in the first div and the second div. Uh, one of them was a class, and the other one was an ID. Um, Oh, I don't know if I had it as an ID, but using a class and ID, uh, both are uh, both signify two different things. So if you use a class, you can have multiple of the same class. So I can have a lot of divs with the class first div, and they would all take this property. And so I made this first div uh, the blue that is in our logo. And if, if you notice here, all of the text here is purple, uh, even the ones inside of the divs. And there's ways that you can specify so that if the p tag is inside of a div you can ignore you know you can ignore the changing the text to purple um for ids oh for classes we use this dot and then the class name to select oh, to select that um you can just like in the example before you can just reference the element um but then you know you kind of cast a wider net and so it's harder to pick and choose which ones to fit to um to fix and or to change and which ones to keep the same and then for IDs, you can only have one of that ID. So I can't have multiple uh, divs with a with a second div as an ID. Uh, and to reference IDs, you use a hashtag or a pound sign or a sharp sign, however you want to define it. Uh, use uh, a number sign to, and then the name of the class. And then it, it's all the same in terms of the properties that go inside. Here I added in the height, uh, and you can change the height here. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other um, properties as well as types of um, displaying the screen. So if you notice here, I have the divs kind of stacked on top of each other. I can put them side by side if I wanted to, or I could have them um, in reverse or whatever. So uh, I could align them in different ways as well. So there's a whole lot of um, different properties. And so you'll just have to, uh, those. that's kind of part of the research that will go into what you might need for your project. Because if I were to try to go through a whole bunch of them, we'd probably be here for an hour. So going into JavaScript, uh, it'll be the same uh, format as the HTML and the CSS. But something that's uh, special with JavaScript is JavaScript is kind of where a lot of the uh, high level things that you see on websites uh, go on. Um, JavaScript is here or object or an object oriented scripting language. And so a lot of the things that we use, uh, the elements can be considered as objects that you can access and do things with using JavaScript. You can change the color with uh, you know, JavaScript code. You can change the text. You can change, you can have it move on the screen with JavaScript. Um, JavaScript pretty much enables users to interact with the web page. You know, clicking this button does this, clicking this link points you here. Um, scrolling down, you can kind of snap to a certain section of the screen if you wanted to. And then lastly, uh, JavaScript is not Java. The two, the two languages are um, completely different and used for completely different things. So first going into JavaScript, uh, since it is a, an object-oriented language, we, do, we should go over uh, variables and how you see that in uh, JavaScript. And so there are two ways, well, there's three ways to um, define variables in JavaScript. And the main two ways are using the let keyword and the const keyword. And you'll see a lot more of this const keyword when you when we get to Colton's React Java React React JS section. Um, but let let the let keyword uh, is similar to how you would define variables in other languages. Where if I say let example one equals this, 
Um, in JavaScript, there are no types. So in the next line, I could do let example one equal five. And it won't, um, it won't you know, get mad or give you an error or anything like that. Uh, in terms of content, it works the same way that in a lot of other languages where once I set it, I won't be able to set it in, um, a, in, in a future line. And then functions, uh, there are also functions in JavaScript similar to a lot of other object-oriented languages. Um, functions here uh, func uh, have this have similar formats. Uh, the function keyword, uh, at least, so there are multiple ways to define functions. Uh, this is the most basic way, the most straightforward, kind of the intro way, uh, the keyword function, and then your the name of your function here. Uh, any parameters you want to pass, so for example, the the variables we passed or, that we made earlier and then the body of the function that you can return something out of if you notice if you notice and if you're familiar with other languages there's no return type um the return time is kind of just what you what you will um like i said there, there's no types in javascript unless you put things on top of it like typescript and all of that stuff um but this could be anything this could be an html element this could be numbers or ints or floats this could be uh, JSON files, uh, or this could be JSON objects or files. Uh, and so that's kind of the strength in JavaScript. Others say they hate it because of that, but that let, that's, lets you do have be, a lot, be really flexible with JavaScript. And so, um, for example, here we have a combined strings function, and console.log is um, a handy tool if it's kind of like a print statement in Python or um, C out in um, in C++, it allows you to see the results of any um, of any code that you run. And so, for example, here we can call the combine strings function inside of the console.log function, and we see an output in um, in the console that you see when you press F12, and you see that kind of the, the dev tools. Um, in the console tab there, you'll be able to see all of this. So how do we kind of put this JavaScript to work in our HTML, um, in our HTML code? Uh, well, in the body of the uh, HTML code, uh, you can that we have script tags, and so this is another element that you can use. Uh, script tags have um, different attributes, like we had before. Uh, here we have a type to define that it's JavaScript and the file that we need. Next, we defined a, another function uh, called change text, where we change the text in the um, in the HTML in the HTML um, file by grabbing the ID that we defined with that you know, uh, element. In this case, if you look at this p tag here, we have an ID of example. And so here, document.getElementById is a function that you'll be able to use um, and access HTML elements, um, reference, essentially taking this p tag and then accessing what is here called the inner HTML, uh, basically the contents of your tag and then changing it to something completely different. So while here it might say click me, uh, once you click the actual p tag, um, it'll change to hello there. And there are things you can do to kind of make it an indicator to be clicked. So for example, when you hover over this p tag, you can, there are styling, um, there's code to change it to where it'll change to a pointer uh, instead of just keeping the arrow. So that's kind of the uh, overview overview of HT the three building blocks of uh, web development. Um, a lot of that you'll see a repeat of in um, here, what Colton's about to talk about, but also in a lot of other frameworks. So I'll hand it off to Colton to uh, get us through the React.js portion. All right. Um, so one of the great things, so React is a library um, for, for JavaScript, for web um, development, and specifically uh, for server-side uh, it's specifically supposed to be paired with Node.js, which is your server-side JavaScript environment. And so we'll be uh, talking about uh, Node.js as well today. So let's get right into that. So the first thing you need to do to start a React project is you need to download Node.js. And so the easiest way to do that is go to nodejs.org and then find your correct um, operating system and which installer you want to use and then download that um, installer and then run it. And so once you're uh, once you get to there, you'll get to the Node.js setup wizard, and that's where you'll um, you just click through. You can click right through this. It's a pretty simple setup. Make sure you have uh, the directory you want for the install. Uh, make sure to accept the terms agreement, and um, just keep on clicking straight through. Um, you don't need to, and you don't need to modify anything, and you don't need to uh, check any of the automatic boxes. Um, it won't be necessary for your install. And then uh, once you can, once you're finished, you can click through, and you've installed Node.js, and that's 
pretty much the only big install you need to do here to get started making websites. Um, so now I'm going to uh, start screen sharing here, hopefully, yep. And I will show you what you need to be looking for. All right. So let's see, is my screen share, all right, just, I, I know there's a bit of a delay, but can everyone see what we've got going on here? Um, screen share. I've just got a blank command uh, prompt going on. Uh, Jose, can you, can I get yeah. a confirmation yeah, on that? Yeah, I can, I can see your mouse moving around, or I could see okay. your mouse moving on, I can see your, um, your yeah. command prompt. All right, so now that we have uh, Node.js installed, uh, the first thing you want to do is verify that Node.js is actually on your computer. So the easiest way to do that is to go into the command prompt of your system, and you're going to type node-v. Or for Linux systems, it would be something like node-dash, I think it's like dash uh, version or dash dash version. But uh, for Windows, it's node-v. We'll see uh, pops up here. There's my version of uh, Node.js. So that's all set to go. Um, and then one thing Node is going to give us that's important here is Node provides Node provides its own package manager, and so packages are all the various things like React, um, a bunch of other things you can start delving into that are um, that just make your project that much better. Um, uh, they're gonna so there it varies in what you can do, but this package manager is kind of important to have. So we're gonna also check that MP, and so the package manager is npm do npm v. And I can see here now that um, Node success, MPM is also successfully installed. Um, so now that I have those two installed, it's really quite simple from there. I'm going to go to the directory. You need to go to the directory where you want to create your project for your website. Um, and so that case, I'm in my uh, GitHub folder right here and I am all set. So the um, next step is to type out the command MPX uh, create dash react dash app, and then whatever your app name is going to be. So for this one, I will do prehacks and start that. Once you run that command, um, npx is part of the npm uh, package manager, and it's going to just go through here and start generating your application. Um, and so this is the great again. The great thing about React is React take care takes care of everything from the get go. So once you run this command, it's going to have a website that's ready for you to run. Um, and and that's one of the uh, one of the things I liked about it because I just got into web development about a year ago um, as part of Pickaxe, and uh, using React has been a really easy way to get some of that um, some of those websites going. And later I'll probably show you an example of one of the websites. Um, I've been working on that's been directly uh, using React. So we're going to wait for this to finish up here. Um, and while we're at it, actually, make sure that's still running. Um, so I'm going to go into, so one of the things great about React is React pairs with a lot of stacks. Um, there's, and there's a couple, uh, there's one big one that I'm gonna be talking about today, it's the MERN stack. Um, so we're talking full stack development, um, which is something you're probably gonna want for any website you're developing. Um, so you got your React and then um, we, all, we have Node.js obviously, and then we have these two others here. So MongoDB and Express. And so what Express is going to do is it helps a little bit with um, web routing. It helps with you uh, setting up uh, the correct URLs to the correct pages so that you can access different parts of your um, web page. And then MongoDB is your database service, your back end. Um, and so, and again, what's great about React, what's great about all of this is that there's uh, like tutorials online that allow, that go straight through how to set some of these things up. Um, and so you could simply going to like a web web page like this, uh, looking up the stack, and it'll take you straight through how to set up one of these web pages. And ultimately, you'll have a full at the end of the tutorial, you have a full stack uh, web page going on here. So it appears that this is there. We go. Make sure that's running correctly. Um, but yeah, again, all of this is designed with the purpose of making it easy to start a web page. Um, and so we'll wait for this to finish loading up here. Uh, give that a little bit of time. Um, while I guess we're at it, so I can go through some 
Um, some of the other things. So there's also, uh, if you choose to do another thing, there's also the mean stack. This is same stack I'm talking about, but it's for Angular. Um, so Angular is just like React in a sense. It's another server side uh, JavaScript uh, type thing. And um, so if you're interested in doing something besides React, you can always do the mean stack, um, and this will use this will also be a very easy to set up thing. And along with, and there's also lots of other stacks you can use. Like we're using Mern, which involves React, but there's lots of stacks that you can uh, look for if you're looking for uh, different functionality. If you want to use Python or something, you can do uh, Django route. Uh, you want to do Ruby, that's your preference. Um, again, all all in what you'd like to do. Um, and so some other th and some great things about React is there's, for example, there's this uh, lovely website called Ant Design, um, and you can easily implement uh, visual features, visual JavaScript features. For example, uh, like a very nice customizable table element is one thing that comes with this. Um, and so this is a nice website to do that. You can um, and it has tutorials, examples of, for how you can get started using this. Um, and then there's also Mongoose, um, which is a popular library that you can use to access Mongo uh, MongoDB databases uh, using uh, using React using JavaScript. Um, this is and this is very easy to use. Um, I would highly recommend if you're looking to use Mo uh, MongoDB as your database backend for a web page. You can also do Firebase. So again, possibilities are endless um, with what you can do here. Okay. So let's see where we are at. Should be almost done. All right, so we're going, that was taking a little bit too much time. Um, so we're going to, I already have a pre-generated web uh, thing, so we're gonna get right into that. So go, so once you've got your React uh, project installed, you can, uh, you can quickly view it just by going, opening your IDE, going to wherever you have that. And then, so here's the one I just did earlier today. Uh, we'll pop this open. And this is um, uh, this is what you have generated from React. So this is all of your code um, here in these two folders. And if you go to the command prompt, you can also navigate it to, to it. Um, and then that'll that'll show roughly the same thing um, that you're going to have here. And so the easiest way, once this React project is uh, ready, you can run it just by doing npm start. And then that'll start your web page. And so we're going to give this a second to cook. Um, meanwhile, we will go over so some of the basics of what you're getting here in your, um, let me see if that's, Load it up. There we go. That's starting to load. Um, so what are you getting with your React project? So your React project, you got a couple different folders here. You got your public folder and your source folder. Um, and then you have some other GitHub stuff. You got your gitignore file. You got a couple of um, version uh, JSON files here. Uh, these are important for um, any sort of libraries you're going to have. Because as it's, you can see here, you have um, like you have your React, you have your React versions. Um, and you can also add on to this. So if you wanted to add new libraries um, to your React project and you're having issues with versions, you can. Um, this is where you're gonna wanna edit those things is the package in the package lock files, um, specifically the package file for new things you're going to be add. Cause then you can add um, different, you can add different versions for different, um, your different uh, libraries. And so then hopping into what uh, we have otherwise. So you got, so you have all of these app generated files. So you have app um, JS, which is what uh, renders the web page. You have your, and then you have your CSS file, which we've seen this before. Um, this is just a React specialized version of that, um, but it's got all of the different little bits of CSS and the colors. Um, and then there's also additional um, characteristics that you can add to these. And then, um, and then we have our index and our index, um, index.js, index.css. So the way this works is the index is what actually deals with the React component. And this is, um, this is what, this is, I guess, where you could say it starts. Um, the index, because the index is also in reference to the index.html. 
um, which is uh, our starting page HTML wise for the React project. And you can see um, like this is where it's getting the uh, image. So if we go now to web page, this is the basic web page that uh, we just created. Um, and this is being hosted. Uh, this is how you access it, localhost 3000. Um, and you can, if we inspect this here, you're going to see all of the same stuff that we just saw in the HTML page. Um, so here's um, it's just some of that stuff in there. There's also some stuff that's been inserted from uh, from other like other parts of the website. But um, overall, there's still going to be the same sort of stuff. There's your index, and then there's the app CSS index.css. Um, there's those components in use. So we'll go back to here. Um, and so, yeah, so everything starts at the index.js, which then turns, um, starts a rendering process. And then from there, it calls upon the app.js uh, JS play area, which is where we actually see some of the um, HTML embedded in the JavaScript. Um, and so if you didn't know, that's a special uh, one thing you can do. You can embed, um, and specifically, this is returning, which is why you have HTML in here, because it's returning to the index page. Um, so it's returning just all of the actual HTML code that's um, got like the link, uh, like this link right here, and uh, the text. Um, and so that uh, that basically covers what the what React's given to you. Um, this is, again, and all this can be edited, you can add on to this. Um, and while you, uh, the important thing I think about React and the important thing that you should know is that this is, while this is a great starting point, there are a whole lot of other places that are getting, uh, that you can build off from this. Um, so once you've installed that React project and you, you know, you can go from there and you can start editing this web page, you can also start adding, you can also uh, start from places like Ant Design. Um, and you can do, and you can start um, with like a stack tutorial and you can go through the stack tutorial and you can add your database, you can add all your different services to make this a fully functioning website. And so what I'll show you here is an example of a MERN full stack. Um, so this is uh, same, it's still using React. This was generated uh, using React, but it's also using a couple of different projects. Um, and so for one thing, it's using Express. And so what Express allows me to do as Express allows me to uh, create routes so that I, uh, when the user is going to different, I can uh, set up different like endpoints, different places for the user to access the web page. Um, so if I wanted to set up like uh, like one section that's of my web page, it's like, hey, this is like a section for all of our users. Um, I could do that, and then I can set up another section of the web page that's like this is our basic information. Um, so that's where you do with the routes. I also have a model section. So this is using Mongoose. Um, and Mongoose, with, with this, I can set up a uh, schema, a database schema that says, that I uh, taught, that I use to work with uh, MongoDB. And this takes all this information um, and it uh, looks at it and it uh, formats it so that we can use it on the website as well as communicate with the MongoDB. And then, over here, we said, and see, you can see the similar stuff right here. We still have the same index.html um, kind of thing going on here. And then there's in the same app.css, app.js, it's all there. Um, there's just some add ons. Um, and then there's like more, um, and then there's more code you can add on. This is, uh, I, show, I showed you guys Ant Design, and this is from Ant Design. So this is a, uh, this is the actual bulk of the JavaScript. And this does all of the handling for uh, Ant for um, Ant Design, and this actually generates. Uh, this is actually part of a uh, website that uh, recruiters coming to this event will use to uh, view all of your resumes. Um, so all of your lovely resumes are being displayed through this uh, stack, this web page, um, and it's just one example of uh, how easy it is to really create this sort of thing. Um, and that's, and again, that's a point. Because um, I want everyone here to be able to have an easy, fast solution to just get a website up and running. And that's what React is for, and that's what some of these other stacks are for. Uh, so as far as so as far as that goes, just if I want you to have anything, any takeaway um, from what what is going on here, it's that uh, there's, there's a lot out on the web, um, and there's a lot of great stacks to choose from. I, personally recommend the Marin stack with uh, React just because of how easy it is. Um, but there's a lot of them out there and as there's a lot of 
pretty easy tutorials to follow. Um, they're going to give you all the commands you need to get everything up and running. And from there, it's just your own, it's up to your own creativity and what you want to do with your web page that'll make it great. Um, all right, that'll just about do it for the React section there. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, and I hope, I guess, happy hacking is the right word. I hope you guys have a, uh, um, Hope you guys have a great time at this hackathon, and I hope you take, if anything, you may, we see some React projects when we go to judge. Uh, thank you. Yeah, for sure. Hey guys, thank you, Colton and Jose. That was pretty awesome, and definitely love seeing HTML. I'm in a HTML class right now as well, just to like get better at those skills. Um, can you all hear me? Yep, uh, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys. Um, definitely uh, check that poll that um, Jack just dropped um, in honor of uh, our buddy Colton. So yeah, just click over to the polls. Well, well let's. Uh, I'm kind of confused. Uh, I. I It'll be interesting to see if they get my uh, get which one's my favorite food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, are any of those your favorite food? Wait, don't tell people. Yeah, you can't I, I, share. I didn't tell them. I, I yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see what the uh, people <laughs> people want. Also, if you guys have any questions after that, uh, we're going to be here for a couple minutes. Um, just feel free to ask anything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, because um, we've been able to, like, answer some questions here and there, but if you're, like, waiting on something, then just, like, drop it in the chat and we'll uh, we'll respond. And if you don't have any questions, I mean, it's also awesome to, like, stick around and see, like, what other people are asking, but then also, like, you may have questions along the way throughout pre-hack, so don't worry about it, if that's the case. Yeah. Yep, we'll be here the whole time. Looks like Sour Patch Kids, but not Sour, is uh, taking a little bit of a lead there. Mm -hmm. So, Colton, how do you get Sour Patch Kids, but not Sour? I mean, it's a great a question. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you asked, Jack. And you know, you know, it's not going to be an answer you're looking forward to. Um, <laughs> um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, you know, there's there's only there's few there's only so many ways to get Sour Patch Kids without the sour. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I think my personal favorite is probably just uh, putting him in water, you know, putting him in a water bottle and oh, letting him yeah, sit sure. for a while. Um, mm -hmm. And then you drink the water and then you can eat the uh, the, the nice stack of soggy Sour Patch Kids afterwards. Oh, God. Okay, uh, here's a couple questions here. One sec, crew. One sec, crew. Here's a couple questions. Um, we'll get back to the Sour Patch Kid debate afterwards. What actually, uh, so what's actually happening at Pickaxe? Are we asked to build a website? So you can build whatever you want to build. Uh, you can build a website, a game, um, a music app, pretty much anything that you want to do. It is really nasty. You're right. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> you just build anything that you you know are interested in building and submit it, um, and we'll just judge it based off what it is. So yeah. yeah, you can you can create hardware. Like if you are into creating circuits and whatnot, you can create actual um, actual like physical objects that you've coded the back end and done everything with the circuits for um for the previous iteration of pickaxe uh, one of our winners actually a couple of our winners worked with actual um like golf clubs and hockey sticks and kind of put sensors on them and whatnot and so um if you have that if you have if you're if you have that available um raspberry pies are a big are a big um kind of device that's used at hackathons uh, you can use raspberry pies hook them up to um different uh you know things you build like you can actually build things it doesn't have to be software uh, related um but yeah and anything that you can you know kind of think of to solve um any problems that we'll get into the next question uh do we get to know or gino asked do, you, do we get to know what is the theme for the hackathon and so the theme for yes you do uh so the hacks that uh we were talking about from david hardware software whatever maybe games um all relate to uh entertainment and so basically anything in the entertainment space is kind of what we'll be hacking around. Um, one thing with uh, our hackathon this year is that we actually have three different tracks. So you can hack in the gaming track, music, or media. 
And so if you think of any problems or, you know, think of any cool ideas, any cool apps, um, any cool devices that you want to make related to any of those, um, then this, you know, that would be, uh, that would be what we're, what we are looking for. So if you were to make a new game, there's your gaming, or maybe you, um, make a game, but it's related to a media problem, right? Um, I know a lot of games that are, have been made at hackathons are kind of learning type games. Um, not necessarily a legit game, but, uh, games that, uh, you know, help you learn other things in that theme. So maybe in media, it lets you, um, you know, decide which article is better or, you know, determine what art, like what's factual an article and what's opinion and so st stuff like that, you know? Um, but yeah, gaming, music, and media are our tracks inside of the general entertainment theme, uh, to answer your question. Let me say something really quick. Um, whatever, you know, make your project anything you want to and submit it. It's not like you have to submit one project specifically for gaming. You don't have to pick one of those three subcategories. We will judge your project based off whatever it fits best. So just make whatever you feel like in those categories and we'll pick what it, uh, what it fits best with. Yeah. yeah. So again, yeah, it's not about, uh, you don't, don't go, don't go crazy about making sure something's fitting within one requirement or another. Um, Cause it's really about showcasing your creativity and solving a problem. It's about solving problems. That's what we're all here to do. Um, so, you know, find a problem or something, find something that really drives you, makes you interested um, and build on that. Um, Cause that's what we want to see. We don't want to see something that you're not interested in. We want to see something that you're passionate about. Um, and so that's, and that's really how where you put your own twist on these sort of things. And that's why it makes hackathon so great. So we get to see all that variety. Um, so another question here from Joshua, in the case of games are engines eligible? Uh, yeah, you can pretty much use any engine you've wanted, or sorry, you want to, we've had people submit with like unity in the past or even libraries like Pygame. game. I know. Pi that game, yep. engine, yeah. Um, but it will make, I mean, it, We'll take it into account a little bit how difficult it is. Like, I mean, if it's just an engine where you drag and drop stuff down, I mean, uh, you can still make something impressive, but, you know, we'd internalize a little bit that, you know, that's a little different than coding it all yourself. Um, but what really matters is the idea behind it. Um, so pretty much just use whatever you want as long as you can kind of express your idea uh, in a way you see fit. We'll have more information on kind of the criteria that we're judging on um, during the event on the death post. But one of the criteria is the kind of the difficulty of the hack, uh, kind of how uh, in in general, in broad uh, speaking broadly, you know how polished it is, how ready is it to go um, in terms of like publish, selling, etc. Um, how difficult is the hack? You know, um, are you you know you have no experience with working with these kinds of um, these kinds of languages or tools and you just jump right in and you got something, you know, pretty well done. Is the idea, you know, unique or is the idea creative, you know, how flushed out is it and whatnot. And so uh, those are kind of some of the things that we look for as judges, um, both us and, you know, any of the sponsors that are judging your hacks, because we will also have a uh, sponsor, um, company sponsored prizes. I was gonna say sponsor sponsored prizes. We'll also have company <laughs> sponsored prizes. And so they'll have their own um, prompt that you can hack around as well. Yeah. All right. I mean, we can probably stick around until like 45. So just keep yep. asking questions if you guys have any, and we'll kind of wrap it up around then. Yep. And also, um, we'll be sending out this out shortly uh, in the next day or so, but uh, keep an eye out on your dashboards and on your emails. Uh, we'll be uh, officially publishing the pick text event and notifying basically everybody that's, um, has been accepted and apl or, and applied to this event and or confirmed their uh, attendance. Um, we'll be sending out the Discord as well if you weren't able to grab it in here. Um, actually, Eddie or Jack, can you guys copy that link and put in the chat in case we some people didn't get it? Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, we'll also be getting ready to open up the Discord to our mentors, sponsors, um, all of the other hackers and whatnot. So uh, just keep a, keep a lookout keep a lookout on that. Let's see how the polls are doing. <laughs> Most important poll, obviously, Colton's favorite food. Sour Patch Kids, but not sour, still in the lead. Uh, but spinach <laughs> with the spinach is, mode is coming oh, up. Oh, you come on. Come yeah. on, you guys can't make me, can't make me do that. <laughs> you guys might not know this, but Colton's pretty tall. I, I, so he's yeah, a I guess. Boy. But that only comes from eating Sour Patch Kids, but not sour. <laughs> um, 
exclusively. <laughs> uh, for just a quick question, for all those who who voted, uh, sort of, have you have has that improved? Have like has your uh, your point of view uh, improved on what's going on here? Are you more on the uh, yes train now? I see that number's rising. So are you guys like, do you have a better, do you now have, now that we've answered some questions, are you more confident in what you're gonna be doing uh, at Pickaxe coming up here? Just uh, just let us know if you're still feeling unsure because all we want you to do is be uh, comfortable and confident in what you're gonna do here. Uh, also, there will be more information that comes out as the week progresses. I mean, some of the talks like walking through a hackathon, like that'll clear pretty much everything up. And yeah. then when the actual pickaxe opening ceremony happens, I mean, all the information you'll want regarding that event is going to come out right there. So um, if you don't completely know now, um, you know, hold faith. Uh, I'm sure you'll have a little bit more clear of an understanding um, in a couple of days from now. And if you guys end up having any questions, um, you know, that, you know, feel free to, you know, ping, and ping us in the Discord. Uh, send an email if that's, if that's your go-to. Um, I think... A good amount of you might have gotten emails from me specifically, but also on our website is the our, our hackathon um, specific email, so you can reach out to that as well. Um, but yeah, we have multiple avenues for quite for answering questions. Um, so feel free to ask. Um, looks like we already got a cons uh, good amount of hackers joined up on the uh, Discord. Getting some people going. It's beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Yeah, I mean, anything you guys want to talk about in there? Um, I mean, gonna... to say something at random, you know, um, what I said earlier didn't really get a response. So, um, yeah, kind of annoyed by it, but whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> Colton, do you want to um, answer the poll? Oh, yeah. Is it Sour Patch that's when that's sour? I mean, you know, I had to do it to him. So, yeah. I guess, I guess that means for pickaxe, I will be making some Sour Patch kids that aren't sour. And I will yeah. show you guys the process. Um, uh, uh, if you guys do end up coming uh, to our hopefully in person, I want to say pickaxe next year. I'm gonna say hopefully in person. Um, we will. We have uh, <laughs> Jack and I have promised, and we we got to hold through. We will be uh, making uh, pickle uh, smoothies. Um, actually, no, that's for pickle hack. That that might be for pickle. We could do that for pickaxe too, though. Um, but we will you know, we'll make a smoothie of some sort for pickaxe. We'll, we'll, we'll make a that. smoothie. Maybe a sour <laughs> patch kit smoothie. Um, no, nah, it has to be a pickle one. You guys. What promise. about a? I probably could just make sauce. Well, yeah, but that's for pickle hacks. Um, in case you don't know, pickle hacks is our local like mini hackathon we held. We'd held uh, in the fall. Um, also, so, we got a question. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, are you gonna answer that one? The you can yeah. So one. yeah. So Timothy asked, "What pieces of software would be good to have?" And so, um, for me, I guess my go-to whenever I go to a hackathon is have your preferred um, text editor or IDE if you go that route. Um, I go the lean way of just having Visual Studio Code um, and essentially coding on it like it's a Word document. Um, Visual Studio Code. Um, Sublime, Atom, what, whichever one you like to use, uh, that, and then some command line of some sort to, for me at least, to run the code, to run like the npm commands that Colton's referencing. Um, I use just git bash and have that referencing, uh, have that kind of hooked into my folder system. Um, and for me, at least for making a, a so, uh, for making websites and software, that's pretty much it. A lot of the stuff you'll find is online, Stack Overflow wise, packages you'll use software you'll use, um, libraries that might be helpful in creating elements or styling elements. Um, yeah, one thing I will say a lot of maybe what pieces of software to add to that, I guess it would be what websites might be good to use. Um, a lot of websites that we'll probably have here for Pickaxe, uh, we have a resources page that um, one of our team members, Ella, uh, created. Um, there will be a lot of websites on there that you can access that are like, you know, online websites, kind of like Ant Design or Mongoose that Colton uh, mentioned that kind of help you along the way. Um, one of the big ones that I use is Material UI. Uh, talking about the HTML elements that we have, Material UI creates elements for you and makes you know makes them look a lot prettier than what you see in just raw HTML without having to do a lot of the legwork with, oh, I need to round the corners a certain amount. I need to size the text or color the background of the of the label a certain amount. And so, yeah, Material UI is one of those things. And a lot of these, you know, if you go the um, Mern stack route, you know, a lot of these is just an NPM install away from being able to yep. be used. Um, yeah. 
pa patch kids. Okay, we're getting this now from the Discord that Sour Patch Kids that aren't sour are called Patch Kids. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I think if you take them out of the patch, then we're going to have some serious problems there. Wait, so. just, yeah, wait. You, are you talking about <laughs> just sour kids? Do you just take the patch out? What happens? I don't know what happens when you take the patch out of the Sour Patch Kids. I don't think we want to know. You know what? Let's not think about it. Let's not think about it. Yeah. Let's just um, leave the patch there. <laughs> yeah, we leave the patch there. <laughs> Little Slimers. <laughs> 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 little <laughs> okay yeah little slimers oh my that was very accurate <laughs> that was my nickname when i was young my mom called me that the yeah little yeah <laughs> um yeah thanks for coming david hey same with i mean everybody for being here um first night but having a lot of fun hope you guys are too yep cabbage patch kids oh lord all right all right <laughs> You can we're, make we're some bangs selling now. Cabbage Patch Kids, though. Cabbage Patch Kids smoothies? <laughs> you know what? You can make them. I'll watch. Yeah. Uh, I won't try. Well, you got to you gotta have a pickle smoothie, though, with me. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a pickle smoothie with you. Okay, okay good. <laughs> I, I'm, I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> um yeah i think i don't know on the on the note of like uh like stuff to have installed yeah if you guys don't have like a linux uh like i guess linux based file system thingy git bash is, or for like your command line git bash as jose said is perfect um because i use that for any time i need to do anything that's on like the linux cli as opposed to and using that or the unix or whatever kernel based commands as opposed to uh, doing uh, Windows side stuff, Git Bash is great go-to and it works really well for all intents and purposes. Um, and then, yeah, there's, if you need help starting a hack, Google or us, or like we have plenty of website, I'm sure I'll add to the resource page, like all the different websites and stuff, but there's so, there's so much out there. And a lot of, a lot of things will provide you with that entry level stuff. So you don't have to spend time, you know, figuring out how to get your, just your web page up and running, you know, figuring out how to link different like things, even though hopefully Jose's talk cleared up some of that. Um, um, and also like in the mo area of mobile app development, I don't know if anyone does Android Studio, but there's a lot of easy, like you could do pretty e quick and easy solutions on like Android Studio if you're looking to make a mobile app. Um, just know that firsthand. I don't know about Swift, wouldn't recommend. I think you have to pay a developer fee for iOS. Um, unless you have a MacBook or... Unless you have a MacBook. No. Um, then I think you can develop in Swift pretty easily. Yeah, Macs you can develop in Swift. You can't put to push to the iOS store, but you can still develop in, yes. And yes, a lot of people, to answer that question, a lot of people use GitHub. In fact, almost everyone, I think, uses GitHub. Um, GitHub's... If, if you're doing any sort of programming, 10 out of 10 recommend GitHub. Um, and if you have questions on that, feel free to ask uh, because that's going to make your life a lot easier, especially working in a team. One thing we haven't mentioned yet is we'll also have a lot of mentors at uh, Pick Hacks. And so, you, you know, everybody is welcome to, like all the hackers are welcome to reach out to those mentors bombard them with questions, you know, ask them, hey, you know, you know, no question is too quote unquote dumb for them. You know, there are no dumb questions, especially here. Like, you know, how do you get GitHub running? Because, you know, I, God knows I've had, you know, I've had that trouble for hours uh, one time. Um, how do I you think um, I know how to do it now? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I probably <laughs> have to look a lot of it up. But yeah, like, like, how do you get GitHub running? How do you, you know, if you have, you know, debugging problems, you know, why is this not being centered on my web page or, you know, um, a lot with a lot of problems with NPM, you'll it'll just scream walls of text at you of red and purple text. Like it won't mean anything, and so it like mentors help with that as well. So yeah, we'll have a, we'll have that section in pick hacks, and so that'll be a big resource. Okay, I guess we can start wrapping this up. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming. Just one more note before we go tomorrow and like onwards, we're going to be hosting these talks and sessions instead of the front stage. So just click on that sessions instead. And that'll just help us get the videos up on the YouTube separately, uh, just to make it a little easier for you, uh, you people to watch later on. Um, thanks everybody for stopping by. Um, I had a super good time tonight. Um, it was cool to see all you guys excited uh, to learn about this stuff.
Yeah, it was awesome talking with you guys in the chat and stuff. So thank you all for being here. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, talk to everybody tomorrow. And if you have any questions, just anything, um, feel free to talk in the Discord. You know, uh, we'll be there. And, uh, I'm sure a lot of other people too. So, oh, yeah. all right, cool. All right, peace out. All right, have a good one, guys. Bye, guys.